call to cloth. The story of peace. 500 horsepower tandem compound steam engine. Power from our engine piece is used to make our looms work. Our Lancashire boilers create the steam that piece turns into power. The hot gases from the fire are drawn down the furnace tubes inside the boiler. These are surrounded by water and the heat from the furnace tubes boil the water into steam. The hot flue gases pass through and around the boiler three times to make the most of the heat generated. At the rear of the side flues are the vertical metal plates called side flue dampers. These are raised or lowered to control the hot gases flow and the corresponding amount of air being drawn through the fires. From the side flues, the hot gases enter the economizer where they pass around the outside of a 120 vertical pipe. The pipes are full of water pumped into them by the weir pump. Residual heat from the flue gases transfers to preheat the water which is used to top up the boiler to keep making steam. After giving up most of the residual heat, the flue gases leave the economizer and pass into the chimney. The steam being generated is under pressure, and this is adjusted by controlling the dampers and the level of the fire. Pressure must be controlled and there are safety release valves on top of the boiler which are pushed open by the steam if the pressure gets too high. The level of water in the boiler must be carefully monitored to ensure that the furnace tubes are covered at all times. When the water level begins to drop, the fire beater starts the weir pump, which replenishes the water that's been evaporated. The steam travels through the red pipe from the boiler to the engine room. The steam first enters the high pressure cylinder. This is a double acting cylinder, which means the steam comes into the front side of the piston and pushes it a full stroke in one direction. The valves then change position and a fresh charge of steam is let in to the opposite side of the piston, pushing the piston back, giving two power strokes per revolution. When the steam has pushed the high pressure piston a full stroke and the exhaust valves open, there is still 30 to 40% of the energy or pressure left in the steam. To make full use of this energy, the steam is then passed into the low pressure cylinder and used again. Once it's been used in the low pressure cylinder, it has little energy left, so the steam vapor passes through the exhaust valve into the condenser beneath the engine. The condenser uses cold water from the mill lodge to turn the steam vapor back into water and this creates a vacuum, which helps to make the low pressure cylinder piston move. The used cooling water is then pumped back into the mill lodge, unless water is required in the boiler, in which case the water is drawn into the weir pump, which pumps the water into the boiler. The pistons are located on a common piston rod, which connects to the long rod, which turns the crankshaft and the flywheel. Further along the crankshaft are eccentrics, which operate the high pressure cylinder inlet valves. The governor alters the inlet valve timings to maintain the engine at a constant speed, regardless of how much work it's being asked to do. 
the flywheel smooths out the push-pull thrust of the engine. The crankshaft continues through the flywheel and transmits the power created through the line shafting to the machinery. This animation shows how the engine operated during its working life, after some modifications in 1913. Nothing has been altered in more recent times to improve efficiency, as there isn't much that can be done to make it more efficient.